Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, November 3rd. Congressman Stephen Lynch is our guest this morning, and it's time to go on the record. Quote, we don't trust America anymore. Close quote. Take them Searing words on U.S. foreign policy from the fiery Southie Democrat. Will that passion lead to a chair of a prize committee? The timing of presidential impeachment. We're keeping track on timing. And Pete Buttigieg playing better with moderate Democrats. What new polling could be saying about his chances? Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to OTR. With News Center 5's political reporter Janet Wu, I'm at, I'm at Harding. Timing is everything, and we couldn't have picked a better time to talk to our guest this morning. He is Representative Stephen Lynch from the state's 8th Congressional District. He is a Democrat. He has served on Capitol Hill since 2001. He serves on the House Oversight and Reform Committee and is now seeking the chairmanship of that panel. He is currently the chairman of the sub Committee on National Security. As always, Congressman, it's great to have you with us. Thank you. Good to be with you, Ed. Janet. Thanks for coming in. Um, so we obviously want to talk about impeachment, but yeah. as Ed pointed out, first things first, we want to talk to you about the running for the chairmanship of probably one of the most important committees right now investigating the president, and that's the House Oversight Committee. Elijah Cummings, that's big shoes to fill. Were you close enough to him to know where he was headed, or would you be moving in a slightly different direction? Oh, no, I worked very closely with Elijah. We worked together for 18 years. I know him. You know, I knew him as a man, and, and what his priorities were. Uh, he had the right priorities. So, you know, we've got staff and members. We've been pursuing this in a very uh, thoughtful and and legally expeditious way. I would continue the work that he's been he's been doing, and I and I, I've been part of that program. So. Uh, so he left a plan in place that you are did. obviously he well did. aware of, as well yeah. as other members, and you are yeah. planning to go down that road at this point. Right. No sense in uh, trying to change horses in the middle of a stream. We've got a good program. I think it's been, it, it has elicited a lot of good evidence, direct evidence, and I think we should try to continue the plan that he laid out. So, so there are other Democrats with perhaps more seniority and, and plus at least two other members that are that would like to do it. So right. uh, how is your vote count so far? What are well, you looking at? Well, I, I think, you know, in terms of what Elijah brought to the table. He was an attorney. Uh, he, he, he was familiar with complex multi-party litigation like myself. So I think there was a cohesion that he brought that I could I could continue in terms of, uh, you know, we've, we're interfacing not only with the Senate, with the White House, uh, with our colleagues on our side. We're also in federal court in New York mm -hmm. and in Washington, D.C. We've mm -hmm. got on, ongoing litigation. Uh, you know, I don't know if any of the other members have done depositions on a regular basis as I did it as an attorney. Uh, just the whole legal process, I think it's important to try to be that interlocutor between the members and this more uh, more more technical legal process that we're engaged what, in. What about Speaker Pelosi? Has she indicated thumbs up toward you? Or I, has I she think hinted? she has probably uh, given the same encouraging uh, uh, feedback to all the members that have chosen to run. I, I would believe that. Yeah. And okay. uh, November 18th is going to be the vote for the chairmanship. Is that correct? That's the yeah. So that on, on the 18th we go before the steering committee, which is about 50 members, right? Uh, and they make a recommendation to the House, which will vote. Excuse me, vote to the caucus, mm -hmm. uh, which happens the following day, the 19th. Mm -hmm. uh, the the House is not bound by the recommendation made by the steering committee, but it gives members an opportunity to ask questions and to be, be interviewed. And being from Massachusetts, good, bad? Does that help you? Do you think? I think. For the most part, people vote by the person, not by the state from which they come. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it'd be, uh, I think it'll help me with the Massachusetts <laughs> delegation, <laughs> but I'm not sure much. Those and, votes and are probably, probably the New England up. delegation, yeah. I would say. Yeah. It'd probably okay. give me a... So uh, let's talk about voice. impeachment, which I guess is what everyone is talking about nonstop in Washington outside of the Nationals winning the World Series, go. of course. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears> the House <throat> vote came despite real, harsh debate from Republicans. You've heard all the testimony to date before closed doors. Do you believe there's enough evidence right now to turn 20 Republican votes in the Senate by the time the House is likely to vote for impeachment? I, I would say that there's there's enough evidence, enough direct evidence to, to persuade someone who was open to the truth and to the facts. Uh, so there, there are a couple of decisions going to be made here. One is whether the, whether the elements of a crime have been satisfied, and I, I believe they have. I think we have direct evidence of that. There's a whole other political question, though, of whether or not uh, 
people believe the president should be removed as a consequence of his criminal activity. That, that will be the question for the Republican Congress, or Republican Senate, excuse me, uh, when it goes to a trial in the Senate. And, and I'm, not, I'm not sure of that, but I, I, I am sure that we have no choice. Either the rule of law means something in this country, either, either the oath that you took to support and defend the Constitution means something, or it doesn't. 20 so, votes, though, that's a lot of Republicans that got to get them to change their minds because if it's any indication of how the House Republicans voted, it seems like a near impossible task, doesn't it? Again, if, if they're going to abide by their oath to, de, to de support and defend the Constitution and the facts are laid out there, not only before them but before the American people, it, it is a possibility that, that, you know, we prove the case. You know, I think it's very likely we prove the case. Uh -huh. uh, it's a question whether the American people still believe in the rule of law. When, when we were sitting down to do the show, you talked to me about process. We were talking about process. Yeah. Here, here's one of those process moments. Let's go back to the day the Republicans burst, that's my word, burst into that room where you were taking essentially depositions from key witnesses in the Trump administration. You rejected the idea of bringing in the Capitol Police to break up that demonstration. It, it, the simple question is why, but why? Why wouldn't you have brought in? I think that's what they wanted. I think yeah. it was. A, I think it was a stunt, and and if it was a stunt that included being cuffed and dragged out uh, as members of Congress as a group, uh, I think that would have been destabilizing of the entire process. I think it would have been a violation of decorum. Uh, as I said, I, I would I would rather have a decision coming from a federal court saying whether people abided by the law as opposed to the the. Democratic Speaker of the House getting the sergeant at arms to mm -hmm. remove Republican mm -hmm. members. So I, the optics were not good on that. So I, I thought we should, we should just you know toughen up our security system so they can't do that again, which we have. Mm -hmm. And so we've gone on with the depositions and that that intent that uh, that tactic that stunt to disrupt the process was unsuccessful. So in other words, you think they were looking for that photo of them being oh. handcuffed and dragged out of there? Absolutely, that's what they wanted. And there, do you think there was a disappointment on their part that they didn't get that? Oh, I promise you, there were there were members that asked to be arrested. <laughs> no members kidding. that asked to be arrested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Republicans. Republicans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You ready for the OTR pop quiz? Never, never. Well, I just asked you, so if you were ready for the OTR pop quiz, you know, and never, yeah. but you know what, you yeah. nail these things all the time. Oh yeah. We're going to stop the. We're going to start the pop quiz in Ireland, and we all love the shamrock, but it's not the national symbol of Ireland. So, what is the national symbol of Ireland? It's, we have multiple choices on the screen. Is it the? Is it the? You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. Is it Celtic or Celtic? Is it the Celtic? Celtic cross? Is it the Celtic harp or is it the Irish wolfhound? It's the Celtic harp. It is the Celtic harp. The oldest Irish harps date back to the 15th century. So that and Marty Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went. I was, Shannon Airport. Mr. I, I, I was in Shannon Airport. I was in Shannon, Shannon Island uh, two weeks ago uh, on our way to Afghanistan, and there's a there's a giant size billboard of, of Marty Walsh in the airport. <laughs> Seriously? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right. So let's stay in Ireland. Which of the following locations is not a county in Ireland? Westford, Longford, or Monaghan? Oh. I'll go with Longford. It's Westford. Westford is a town in Massachusetts, oh. but not a county in Ireland. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll be back with Carter. You're, you're doing all right. Oh, you're making me laugh. <laughs>